Hey everyone, welcome to Glazing Talk. This is Alex Bushell. I'm your host. This is brought to you by LearnGlazing.com. And uh, we got Marcus Stare today. We're going to be talking about some shop drawings and what the differences are between these and what we all commonly know as blueprints. Um, let's introduce Marcus real quick, though. Welcome on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and I guess kind of tell our, our listeners why you're here. Uh, well, I've been in the glazing industry since the early 2000s. Um, I started at Harmon Incorporated. Uh, worked in the Detroit office for a few years, and when I left there, I went to a company called American Glass and Metals and uh, did the same type of thing there. I was involved in shop drawings, project management, um, and just you know, kind of jumping in wherever was needed. So in 2006, decided to kind of go out on my own and started uh, MP Drafting, and uh, we've been growing ever since. So we've gone from just myself uh, in an extra bedroom in our tiny house to uh, 15 people with 10 full-time drafters, um, and it's been uh, it's been a fun ride. So this is you guys are doing projects of all sizes. Uh, I guess kind of give us a little more detail about what your company does. So we do projects of just about any size. Um, we do single entrances all the way up to multi-story unitized curtain wall systems. Um, our bread and butter, and where we typically do the most work, is going to be stick-built curtain wall systems. Um, in the one to three million dollar glazing project size. Wow, that's awesome. So, uh, Marcus, uh, obviously, you mentioned a couple other companies. Uh, Harmon, I've heard of before. It's a really large company, one of the largest probably in the U.S. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I think they're in the they're top three or four in the country typically. Uh, they've been larger, but um, you know they they're typically one of the biggest. That's awesome. So, obviously, your experience has, has been lifelong, and this is this is what you know. Yeah, it's been. Um, uh, as much as my dad tried to get me out of the business, uh, he was in the glass business for his entire career, and my grandfather was too. He was a salesman for Ohio Plate. Okay, wow. So this is like generational. This is cool. Yep. So Marcus, I, I wanted to have you on the show because we we're talking about essentially your um, area of expertise. We're talking about shop drawings. This is what your company does. Uh, this is what you've been doing your whole life. And, and I definitely wanted to get some questions in there that uh, I know our listeners and also our uh, our members that are taking our courses would like the extra feedback on um, just some common things, uh, terminology out there that, you know, some people confuse or might not know the difference between one or another. Uh, so I'm going to dive into some of these, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, the first, I guess, question that we had out here is um, even myself, uh, I've been in this industry for a while, and, and you hear this all the time. You hear uh, blueprints versus shop drawings, right? Can you tell us uh, the most basic difference? Why are they not the same? So blueprints is another way of talking about the architectural drawings. Um, back in the day, and even when I started, a lot of the drawings that you received from an architect were actually blue. Um, and it goes back to the ammonia copiers they used to use, um, which is, has been phased out for a while. In the late 90s, they really started, or in the mid-90s, late 90s, they started getting away from that um, and going to you know the white paper that you see today. So when you hear blueprints, it's an old term. Um, but really what they're talking about is architectural drawings. So so there's an architectural drawing and then there's a shop drawing. Yep. And, and these are different. How are they different? So a shop drawing is going to be specific to an individual trade and an individual product. So you can have the architectural drawings which uh, cover everything in the building. And then you have the shop drawings which are submitted to the GC and architect for approval that focus on one specific trade. So in the glass industry, which we're in, our shop drawings will include um, elevations, sections, details, floor plans, specifically for the windows, the curtain wall, the storefront on that project, or canopies. Anything that you're drafting that is glazing related, you would have a specific shop drawing that would be sent into the architect, and then the architect reviews those drawings for approval. Um, the biggest difference between them is the fact that the architecturals is more design intent. They know what they want that window to look like, but they don't necessarily know all the nuts and bolts of how to put it together. The shop drawing is going to drive um, the the project manager is going to use those shop drawings to get the draw order the material. He's going to get the material fabricated, and then his installers are going to use those shop drawings to install the the window. So they're going to installers are going to look for what fasteners are getting used, um, what size the joints are supposed to be, where the frames go, what type of glass goes in the frame. Um, the PM is going to use the shop drawings to order the material from. They're going to do the takeoff from the shop drawings. So the shop drawings is really the nuts and bolts of that specific system. 
okay, so the architectural is going to be like the design, the visual, the concept, the vision per se. And now you got the shop drawings of the actual production side of it so that people can get this made. Exactly. Cool. That's really cool. So so you do shop drawings. And I know that um, a lot of companies need shop drawings. Almost every project out there needs shop drawings. And, you know, we've heard of uh, the napkin drawing that gets submitted to the city. And, and we've heard of the super highly intricate custom shop drawings that some companies need. Um there there has to be different levels, right? And and in in those different levels, I guess uh, something that I've heard a lot, and I'm sure you've heard this, is that people don't always understand what they actually need. So, what would you say are like some of those different levels that that you could you've experienced um, that you would know that you know can take you from a basic project all the way to a complex one? So, there's going to be different things that come into play when figuring out the level of detail you need on your project. Um, some are easy. If you're putting in a simple door into a strip mall, you're not going to need a lot of detail. Um, if you are, if you're a critical component on a 30-story building um, that's cladding the entire outside of it, your level of detail is going to be astronomically more intense. So, a lot of what we see with the level of detail that we know we need to provide comes from the project manager themselves. So, some project managers will make that decision for us and they'll come in and say, hey, I need a quick and dirty shop drawing. Um, this is gonna satisfy the submittal requirement, but my guys know what they're doing. They don't need to go any further. Um, and then you're gonna have PMs that like to see um, an absolute ton of detail where they work hand in hand with you to work through those details to show more information than normal because they feel like the more information they show on the shop drawings, the easier the job is gonna go through once it goes into the fabrication and you know ordering process that sort of thing so a lot of it is going to depend from a drafter's perspective what the project manager wants um, we can glean how much detail an architect is expecting typically by how detailed the architectural drawings are because you have architectural drawings that show next to nothing or even worse i mean it's just completely wrong all the way up to you know why would i need to do shop drawings anyway this architectural shows so much that I'm not going to give you any more information than what you have here and everything in between. So we like to have that conversation with the project manager. They'll have past experience. Their companies are used to seeing things a certain way. So it all comes down to communication for us. We want to know what is that expectation from the PM um, so that when they get the shop drawings from us, it's not too much or too little. So what we've done internally is we've created three levels of shop drawings to satisfy these requirements. So we have what's called a quick draw program. And in that program, you're getting basic, basic shops, but it will satisfy a submittal requirement. A lot of times there's not even a floor plan. There's no surrounding conditions. It's quick and cheap. We have our standard shop drawing offering, which shows a lot more. It shows details that are comprehensive. It's showing in and out dimensions. It's showing all the different notes you need. Um, it's showing sections at the curtain wall. All of the stuff that a normal set of shop drawings should have. And then we also developed a special projects group that gets into the super high-end stuff um, where we're showing every little detail you can imagine. And that group is dedicated to only those type of jobs and they're priced a certain way. And we know going in that we're, you know, what might be a 50 page set for, you know, a medium sized job for the special projects group for the same size job is going to be a 75 or a hundred page set because of the extra detail that they would need. So, so it sounds like a project manager or a glazing company that is your client would be mandating what they want in levels of detail, but are they, do they have to answer to somebody else at any point or do they get to make that call? Is a GC going to expect certain things? Does the city require certain things for maybe permitting? Uh, who's ultimately responsible for really saying, Hey, listen, you're going to draw these for me, but this is what I have to then present to somebody else. Well, that's a tough question to answer, and it all really depends on what type of product you're putting in and what geographic area you're working in, which architect you have. Um, as a PM who doesn't know the answer to that question, I would call their project manager at the general contractor and say, hey, you know this architect, what's his level of expectation? Um, if you're doing a historic window that needs to go through city approval, we're going to do a different set of shop drawings that satisfy those requirements. Um, if we're going, um, if we're doing an extremely high-end building, um, we did a Tiffany's project not that long ago, and the PM told us flat out, you can't put enough detail in here. They're going to look at everything, and you know you're making a Swiss watch of windows. It's so we knew kind of going in. Um, 
the code requirements and stuff, you know, I don't know how much that comes into play. It, it would really be a good idea to talk to your general contractor, reach out to that architect and get a feel from them of what they're looking for. Um, it's going to depend on the type of project, the type of systems, that sort of thing. But you can also get a lot of information from your specifications. So your specifications under the shop drawing sections for your individual areas should have guidelines of what they're expecting from the shop drawings also. Okay, and these are specs that are usually provided by the architect that they've already predetermined, right? That you're just essentially following suit to? Yep, absolutely. Perfect. When you get those architecturals, you'll get a spec book with it, and you should be reading through those specification sections to make sure there's not individual requirements. Um, a one we see come up quite often that usually isn't needed when it's discussed is these specification sections will ask for isometric drawings of all intersecting points of a window. Um, you know, we can provide those, so we usually go back to our glazing contractor customer and ask them, would you like this? Because it is an extra charge. And they'll say, no, let's submit it and see what they say. And right, then of course. nine times out of 10, they come back and they never mark it up. So you're, you're a third party drafting company that obviously does this work for other people. Um, there are some companies that do this work internally and then you sometimes help them with the projects or you take over a project. Um, I'm assuming you do some cleanup on some projects as well sometimes. What percentage do you think of companies nowadays would like to handle that internally versus just kind of give it to somebody like you that knows what they're doing already and they don't have to put that internal resource into it? So we're seeing a lot of companies that want an in-house resource. Um, the bigger companies and the companies that have very specific requirements for shop drawings, they have preconceived notions of what they're looking for. Those companies like to have in-house departments because they're working with the same person every time. They can control the standards um, but realistically, with you know, we'll do 350 to 400 jobs this year. I would say half are with companies that have in-house departments, and they're just too busy to be able to do it all at once. So an in-house department is tough because you can't typically staff up to handle your needs 100% of the time. So even if they have that in-house department, we get that call to help quite often. So would you say that they're usually kind of focusing on maybe something that's a little more difficult internally or trying to do something like quick turn and burns with the guys internally and giving you the complex stuff? Uh, we see it both ways. We see companies that do large unitized work that give us the podium levels or the first floors that they don't want to handle. And we see companies that will be the exact opposite. They'll handle the easy stuff and let us do the hard. Okay. So yeah, either way, it all depends on your situation, your team's level of experience, um, we have a couple of companies that we get only their complicated stuff and they handle all the easy stuff. That's probably, it's probably a 50, 50 split. So, so you hear all the time, I've talked to a lot of the guys actually installing the glass in the fields and so on. And one of the, the common complaints is, is typically like, Hey, Oh my God, this doesn't have anything. I don't know where to put this. The details aren't there. Uh, and, and if I understand correctly from some of your answers, ultimately the PM would also have that control, right? So it comes down to the PM uh, having to have that knowledge of what his crew members would need um, do you at some point just kind of trump that and go over and add a little more, or are you following exactly what the PM says? Like, what kind of input do you have in that relationship? Um, well, typically we always want to give our customers what they're ex expecting. Um, and, you know, expectation, you know, is reality for them. It doesn't matter if it's right, wrong, or indifferent. If that's what they want, we're going to give it to them that way. Um, there's companies out there that, you know, we know that these manufacturers want to show a, a caulk joint underneath a subsill, and they say, nope, I'm putting that hard down on the sill, and we need to draw it that way because that's what they're looking for. So at the end of the day, communication is huge for us because, you know, we may think it's the right way to do something. They think it's the right way to do something else. And at the end of the day, the glazing contractor and that PM is the is the one paying the bills and, and driving that project. So we're going to default to what they want. Well, they'll still need to get all their approvals from somebody else anyway, right? So the installation is not just whatever anybody wants. There are procedures and specs and standards to all of those things. Absolutely. So um, in terms of like just what I meant, like the glass guys out in the field, you know, not knowing where to put a screw or something like that, that's that's not the drafter's job, I guess. It's it's the PM needs to be aware of where everything needs to be is kind of the general consensus. Yeah, absolutely. And shop drawings are not installation instructions. And that's something that we run into from time to time. Um, there are PMs out there that want, you know, these, their field guys to only have to look at the shops and nothing else, um, but they're not installation instructions. That document is, is the king above all else, because if you don't put your systems in per those instructions from the manufacturer, you're not going to get the warranty from them. 
you know, they're, they're not going to stand behind anything because you didn't do it the way they wanted it to be done. So at the end of the day, you know, we don't want to draw anything that goes against those. Um, so that's where we'll raise our hand more often than not. But, you know, these uh, guys in the field and the PM need to be intimately aware of those instructions, know what is requested from the manufacturer and follow those first and foremost. So you guys have to deal with engineering, obviously, uh, everything that you do or, or you have a partnership with engineering because a lot of these shop drawings have to be stamped. That Somebody has to ultimately take the approval on that. Um, do you guys have a relationship with an engineering company? And uh, We do. We have a team of engineers we use, or a group, I should say. Um, we work with about four different ones across the country that we feed quite a bit of work to. So we get awesome lead time turnaround and pricing. And so we provide engineering services on more than half of the jobs that we do. That's awesome. So you guys have become like this little hub where you can just take this entire project off of somebody else's hands and, exactly. and help them out with it. That's really cool, Marcus. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I think that's all the questions I had for you today, unless you, you got something else you want to give us some feedback on here. No, I think this uh, this was awesome. And um, I think the biggest takeaway from any of this is if you're using an outside source or even have a drafter in-house is just communicate what your expectations are up front. The biggest areas where we get upset customers, if and when we do, is we draw something that we think is correct, and when they get it, they think it's wrong. But that could have easily been avoided by an upfront kickoff meeting or conversation. And if you want something a certain way, be vocal about it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I guess uh, providing you the right information is, is one of the things that I guess we all struggle with, right? It's it's really quick and, and easy to try and hand something off. Um, I, any project manager I talk to, and, and especially through all these courses and all these things that I've been learning and, I, and we've been teaching other people, um, is ultimately accountability and responsibility for your own stuff, right? And yep. uh, while you're using a third-party service for any one of those things where you're ordering the parts from a one vendor or getting some other things from any other vendor, uh, you have to take that control and you have to make sure that you're getting what you need because at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of the person who's ultimately uh, being looked at, right? This was your project to manage. So, uh, yeah, this is all really good information. I'm sure uh, project managers that we have on our courses would appreciate some of this feedback because communication is absolutely key. We all agree on that. And, and uh, the, more you, the more you know, the better you're going to be able to do your product and, and, and service other people with it too. And therefore, it always makes everybody's job easier too across the board. Right? Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Marcus, thank you for, uh, for coming on. Uh, again, this was uh, our talk about shop drawings and... Uh, Thanks for everybody for listening. This was Glazing Talk, uh, brought to you by Glazing uh, Industrial Technologies. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.